Thank you. Well, are we going to see you now? No. Yeah, if I, if I need to speak, then I'll run in the front room and um, put the video back on. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the November 1st planning committee. Look at the committees again, working groups. Uh, just before we start, I'm going to ask members to suspend standing orders. So, Councillor O'Donoghue, who is attending via Zoom, although she can't vote, that she can speak. Everyone agree? Agree. agree? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any members of the public now on here? May we have the Apologies for your absence. Yeah. Another day. Before that, I'm going to see you down there, Karen. Thank you. Hello. Uh, declarations of interest. Receive declarations of any personal prejudicial interest under consideration on the agenda. Nobody? Thank you. Um, item three to receive minutes of the planning committee held on Monday, October 11th. You will note if you've got them in front of you, the minutes say the 7th. That is going to be changed to the 11th. Everyone's agreement. Anyone any comments on those before we send those to the full council? Thank you. Item four, Buckingham, Buckingham neighbourhood plan, by the Bell's good plan. Any updates? Mm -hmm. The clerk, not the planning clerk. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Touchbury. I think that we, for you, Chairman, that we, we need to push on now and ask them. Um, whether they could be doing any preliminary work on the transport um, um, into the Buckingham Town. I don't think it's too early for us to comment on that because we, if you recall that we all had the Buckinghamshire Tran Council's transport plan, which came to this committee, which put the Western Bypass in, and it also put some mitigations of traffic in various parts. Of it. Though we had difficulties of it, it was a move forward. I think we need to write to them. Um, to ask them at what stage are we need to discuss that with us because the views of the ourselves that we can decide in Buckingham about how transport moves around the town in the future years is going to be a big one if, if as we suspect we'll have to take growth um, looking at the government's proposals for growth so we do need to start those conversations not um, use the original document as a source document to start the conversation because it would be too late if People take these decisions who live in other parts of Buckinghamshire, not recognising the difficulties that we've got here. And I think I'd like to ask whether we can do that through the chairman, just write some an early conversation. Thank you. Could Clark, could we? Um... Yeah, we can do. So the approach the neighbourhood working group has taken is to commission myself and Sheila to meet with officers in the first instance. So would it be possible for us <coughs> to have that meeting first and then report back on progress? Excellent, excellent, but we can't neglect it because we might find that they, um, looking at the way they like to do the funding for everything, if it comes to um, the government changes the funding package, um, we might find that the development money from here doesn't actually build anything here. Um, so we need to defend it. Thank you, Robin. Does everyone in agreement with that? That we leave it in the hands of the town clerk to make the initial approaches. Thank you so much. Um, item 5, North Bucks Parishes Planning Consortium to proceed and discuss the report from Councillor Ralph. That's what it's in your hands. Thank you. Um, well, hopefully everybody's ready. Um, I freely admit it's fairly heavily cribbed from the minutes of the meeting, and I waited until I got the minutes, and obviously um, decorated with a few of my own comments and prejudices even. <laughs> so there it is, it gives you a flavour of what everybody else is talking about around the area. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very helpful report to us. Thank, Thank you. you. You are reflecting what's going on there. Councillor Harvey first, then Councillor Thatchby. Um, thanks from me for the report as well. It's very useful. A couple of questions really that maybe you can answer. That's right. Why, why is this committee writing to Lou Mother when he's no longer a Shire or indeed a town councillor? Okay. Secondly, the levelling up um, agenda should surely mean that the, uh, the arc should move a few miles, probably about 100 miles or so north of here. Because we don't need levelling up, but I think there are parts of the Midlands and parts of the northwest and east that probably could, could deploy it. Um, and also, I wasn't sure about the last point where there was some disquiet over the idea of a pan bucking up. 
Dunn in the same hand, Buckinghamshire. Yes. Yes. Okay, that might be helpful to perhaps maybe you amend that before it goes into the record. Yes, by all means. Because obviously we like our pan bucking design guide. Mm -hmm. yes. We may not like the pan bucking shy designs. Okay. Uh, to answer your first question about um, uh, Lou Munger, I mean, he is well known and well respected by MBPPC, and they felt that as, as a um, experienced county councillor or, uh, and certainly very involved in things. So to get him to have a look and see what uh, his points and, and thoughts and comments were. And they really use him as an independent um, guide in that respect. And, and um, that seems, would seem to be the general acceptance by the whole of the, uh, of the members present at the time. And I saw no reason not to uh, say that wasn't a good idea. And more than very to a point. Um, as far as uh, leveling up, um, I'm slightly at a loss on that one. All I mean, we talked about the arc and, and whether, particularly whether a Buckinghamshire Shear Council should be involved or not. And that really was pretty much what, what the thrust of the meeting, uh, meeting's discussion was. And, and I do accept that I should put Buckinghamshire. Uh, design guide because the uh, county the county, the county council has been awarded some money and um, uh, we didn't want um, either made plans or or uh, design uh, elements which as we know we've done quite a lot of work on we don't want them to steamroll it by something that might uh, uh, be a high wickham vernacular but won't look right sitting in the middle of Fuck you. Thank you. Councillor Stutchford. Yeah, firstly, thank you, Councillor Rao, for attending this. And those here. the things which stick out at one is I'm curious if you if you join the bit about the bail plan and the action group. Um, it's obvious that the bail plan going through and those who voted for it, just in, in their giving it um Given it legs in the sense of the legal legs, it, it seems quite a strange action, but um, that alone, the Val plan is where we are. And the action group's actions with regard to those developments are what the action group's working on. We do need to seek clarity on elements around the perhaps we can get that at some point about the proposed calling, and, and that was, I believe, was around section 106. The elements around the Cambridge arc, you will recall that. Buckinghamshire Council took the choice to not be part of the Cambridge Arc group. And I can't speak for the leader of the council, but the leader of the council expressed the reason why, because the, the Arc group in itself is a collection of councils. And, and historically, when it was first formed, there were five councils in Buckinghamshire had seats at the Arc group. Buckinghamshire would only have one. And if the others decided to move the direction of where the growth was going to be on the arc. If you look at the arc map, it hasn't changed. Um, so we do need to um, keep a very careful eye on that because what the, the requirements for Milton Keynes are the requirements for Oxford are may not be the requirements for North Buckinghamshire. And of course, we, we do need to work closely with the Buckinghamshire Council on their emerging plan. My view is expressed in council was always that, that I prefer a Buckinghamshire plan to decide to vote in Buckinghamshire, not the Cambridge Arc. And I would presume that we should be careful what the government wide paper does. I do wonder whether we um, are at the precipice of, of, of another urge of growth and, and, and how it's going to action. But the Cambridge Arc will define us. It will, it will be the... Um, the penultimate actions of anyone what happens in that. And the growth will come to that in the white paper together will define North Buckinghamshire. I'm really pleased that they're discussing that. I have no problem with um, um, Councillor Lee Munger um, or previous Councillor Lee Munger being involved in this. If you can bring something positive to the table, which is since um, this, we should applaud him for that. And, um, and, and thank you for it. There will be many other lay people also will be contributing to this from other societies. But thank you, Anthony, for such a precise 
uh, 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 elements of what took place in the meeting. Knowing how I be right, there must have been a hell of a lot more said than what was actually in this um, uh, in these brief notes here tonight. But you have encapsulated the main topics. Um, but as I said, I, I do believe the can be got from the government development plan will be fine. As Thank you, Robert. Anyone else on that? Okay, thank you. Let's move on to item six action reports. Um, at the top under news releases, Tindrick Road 30 mile for our consultation. In fact, um, we have agreed to not make that release until after tonight's discussion of the consultation, which is item 10 on the agenda. It will go out though uh, this week. Um, other items, there's a couple of them Councillor White is looking into, he's obviously not present, the bypass bridge, town hall frontage. Um, Catherine, have you? Yeah, yes, yeah, so, um, so just a casual meeting or shopping. So um, I just didn't say. Just remind uh, We've got things on our actions. Okay. And he gave me those verbal answers. So. Yeah. Um, tree is inviting Mr. Patton to meet with Councillor Patton tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Trees inviting Mr. Passport to meet him. Trees obviously very much in the public eye at the moment, particularly after the uh, tornadoes yesterday. Um, inviting Mr. Passport to meet him. Town clerk to report on any progress. The, the, the recent progress has been an exchange of emails. We don't have a date, but we'll be sure. Thank you very much. Councillor Harvey? Just checking, there's, there's, a, there's an item in there which says Councillor Harvey stuff to be in the clerk to formulate a letter. That, it's not waiting on me to do something. If it is, I'm sorry I haven't done it. But the moment we still haven't done it. <laughs> this is the street lighting letter. Uh, yeah. yeah. Could I? We were going to sort of call it a letter, but the council stuff we has. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just good news on the street lighting matter. Um, I did the town clerk with a copy of it and, and Catherine got it. After some garbled communications between me and the officers, I think you could quote them as garbled communications. Um, the upshot of it is they gave the assurance that the ones which we discussed at the last meeting, being the ones along the parade, being um, M Co were going to be repaired, and and on the good side of it, they also one of the Lancaster masters had one outside his house, and they're going to repair that. So it just seemed that they're actually coming into the town and giving overtones and repair. I think that was what we were going to write the letter. About. No, no, no. It's just Tindrick Road Street Light. That, that was part of the discussion. Though. The Tindrick Road Street Light. You brought it into the discussion, but it's very much focused on the street light. Did it again? Up from Westfield. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Up from Wisfield, um, up to the new estate. So that's what we're talking about. You're quite right, Dennis. So um, on the, I have got correspondence which I've given the town clerk on that. Um, what um, I believe on the street lights. And what I would presume we do with that is the town clerk deliberates that out, and I think it's perhaps best to come back through. Um, the chair and the vice chair and, and that particular committee because it appears to me that the answer given is that that there's no funding to put street lights down the Tindrick Road past the um, the area of the 278 works. We obviously wish them to fund that, but the there was nothing put into um, the agreement with the council to do that. What there is in that correspondence, and I think only right that it comes from other members of the council to this, is the reason is it's you can't actually ask the developer to fund stuff outside their area of development. And if you look at the road, um, we did manage to achieve, which will come to you again, um, we did manage to achieve through putting it into the rights of way parts of the section 106 agreement, we have achieved something which we couldn't achieve, which is the cycleway and the lighting of the railway walk, which, um, which I believe is in it. Town Clark's read my correspondence, if correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the lighting down there. So we've got something outside it. What we didn't get is the additional lights down there. Now, I think the conversation at the time wasn't premising on that, and it was premised on what we've got out of the development and we've got the light to look to the roundabout. Although I do concur with Councillor Harvey's view that, that people walking in, in the dark down to Buckingham is not what we want to see. And until the time as the two worked at the Monroe Walk, um, 
the same walking to school route for the children there is non-existent. So um, I think what will happen, I believe, is that the chairman and the town clerk and the mayor and the deputy are going to bring something to a committee at a further point and go in detail about that to so have a proper conversation, not just one person speaking. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. The, the action in front of us is that Councillor Harvey Stutchbury and Clark formulate that to what members wish to do about this. So, can I just just on that? So, Councillor Stutchbury basically told them the content as part of that correspondence. So, given that Councillor Stutchbury asked the same question through a different route and got a reply, which can be or the content of the don't discuss with the chair. Um, there's not much point us writing the same that asking the same questions again because we'll get the same answer again. Um, we, we do need to work through the correspondence a little bit to check that it's not missing anything obvious and then feedback to you where do we go next because if it is correct what it seems on the face of it is that, that there is no funding to provide that street light and so we'll be getting that answer then either we could find a case for persuading somebody somewhere that there should be funding or we need to take a very long view of how we resolve that situation or take it to some kind of different stance. But I don't think members could have that full discussion tonight without the information no. in front of you before the meeting. Thank you very much. Councillor. I, I think when either the section 106 was written really badly, which wouldn't of course be a surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and actually when they thought about putting in the wider park all the way into town, they didn't conceive of the possibility that it might need, it might be, need to be lit as well. That that's possibility is not in the section 106 agreement, or it is in the section 106 agreement and should have been done. And the developers can't be gleefully ignoring doing anything else, even though they are bound by the section 106 to do so. I would like to see some clarity upon whether the section 106 does or does not. And that's the, then the foundation for deciding where we go from here. Thank you. Catherine. Section 106 says nothing whatever about lighting along the public street. The only lighting is for the cycleway that they're proposing to upgrade the railway and scenic walks to. And we haven't even got any kind of whether this is going to be lampposts or just bollards with lip tips to, so that you don't go tumbling off the side. So could we take the clerk's advice then at this point and, um, and drop that matter? Or that letter, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you, Kathy, Chairman, we did briefly touch on this earlier today. With, um, I spoke to you, Vice Chairman, about it. So it's probably better if it comes from you and the town clerk to a meeting rather than me say it's my correspondence. And yeah. that way, and the town council's business, not the business of the Buckinghamshire Council's correspondence. So I think that's probably the better way. I share all Council Harvey's concerns, but I did go away. And the reason we got that information, not from a, it's, it's a meeting that I had of a Buckinghamshire Council, which I'm entitled to, over the entire Section 106 mm. agreements. And I think that's why I wanted carefully brought that through officers to this meeting, Thank rather you. than me making a mistake in what I say. Thank you. May, may we're going to agree, but that's that to the clerk and myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thank but you. Can we just admit that again, a Section 106 agreement has let the townspeople down? Because if that's serious. Everyone agree with that? Yeah, thank you. Um, just other items on the action is um, Odd Fellows Hall. Um, there will be an update on this under enforcement tonight. <laughs> um, surprise, surprise. Uh, the, that, the census figures, I'll be reporting on that. That was one of the two questions I raised at the quarterly ballot meeting. Um, anything else on there that anyone wants to raise? Yeah. yeah, we had an answer by the way on the back about the yellow trailers. We asked what what they were for all over North Bucks. So East Wales, uh, sorry, East West Rail and Buckinghamshire Council funded. East West Rail gets priorities for diversions and the like, but other messages can be requested. Buckingham Town Council events published has been submitted for consideration on local ones. So we we've got them, we're stuck with them. They've obviously been sharing the cost of them from time to time you do see them instructing trucks not to go through little hallwood or respect 20 20 miles an hour through golf or, or whatever places they shouldn't be going that's the touch one thing is the 40521 stroke two one um balance and form lace it will actually correspond with its late um the captain and i were talking to him by email at um quarter to 12 on saturday night um so nothing else is constantly actually getting back to me. Um, so I, I, I've asked 
forwarded that correspondence to, to the town clerk. We need to read that correspondence and see where we, we go with that statement. Um, because I wasn't completely didn't want to send a rude email back to the cabinet member at midnight. Um, and I think it just raises many questions, it raises answers. I'd rather that that come back to a future meeting with, with the correspondence read again and see how best we address that response. Because I'm not in the business of accusing anyone of anything. Thank you, Councillor Stutchery. I, I too had sight of it. Um, thanks to Councillor Stutchery, as we said, I think that next meeting gives time to consider it. Because there's, there's a lot of things that are not right in that. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't want to say. Thank you. So are we finished with action list. Thank you, everybody. Let's move on to planning applications then. Just six tonight. Um, yeah, first, I want to record I won't take part in any of them, so I'm going to be quiet. So that makes the easy go. Item one is number two, Ballard Drive. This is a retrospective application for a 1.8 metre fence. Uh, which goes alongside the footpath at the entrance to Mallard Drive. It's opposite the um, Kingdom Hall, Brethren Hall. Um, you've seen Catherine's comments on it, I guess, change of use to redundant land along the side dwelling to garden land. Um, the landowner, the, the owner of the house, claims he has bought the, the land there. What is of concern um, is that most of Hartland's estate is open plan. And this Fencing it goes against the status quo. Um, we also found that it was a condition number nine on the Hartlands that open spaces should be respected for the good of the community. So that's the trying. Yeah, I object to this. Um, even though the applicant has bought the land, that doesn't mean he can enclose it. Um, it should still be open space, even if he owns it, um, and it matches the other side. So. Um, it's part of the design of the area. So it should stay like that. Thank you. Councillor Hardy. Yeah, I, I agree with Councillor Troy. I mean, obviously, I, I live nearby. And uh, when the fence went up, it was like a certain degree of shock. And I think I'm not aware of that from the other people who live on, on the same estate. Um, I mean, reading through the story, that he, because of the extra building work and back um, extension that he put in, that, that less garden, well, that's the deal, isn't it? <laughs> you know, if you build on your garden, you get less garden. Um, and, um, and there would have been a way around this, frankly, if they put up a short, a, a small fence, potentially, and put some hedge, hedges in. Otherwise, my fear is, to prove where Council tries to go as well, is that this is allowed to happen, then there will be lots of other spaces on that on that state where it may well happen too, and that would be a great sad loss to the feel of that particular state. It's just the way it is, and so I would object to. Um, Thank you, um, Carolyn. And just for the benefit of people watching um, the podcast, Carolyn Cummings represents the Buckingham Society as, as one of our consultants. And the Buckingham Society would be the time we've obviously been made so far. Particularly this estate, which has deliberately been designed with open spaces to be attracted to the public highway. Uh, and this fence is frankly an aberration. It is noted that in the new design guides that have been prepared for the neighborhood plan, fencing of this description fronting a public footpath on the highway will be discouraged entirely because is there an eyesore? And if nothing else, this should be approved. Um, one of the conditions we would ask for is that the fence is retreats by 50 centimeters or whatever it is to make sure that it's two meters beyond the edge of the public footpath. And, and that some planting is, is, is put in as, as a compensation for what's been taken out. It really is. Disgraceful. Thank you, Karen. That, that You've just raised the point, actually, that Catherine also raised, that uh, when they filled in the application, they put, won't have any trees or shrubs being removed, and they said no. Of course, they had already that was retrospective. At the time he started all this, he had to, had to remove a lot of trees and shrubs to do it. So that was a little bit disingenuous. Uh, we would add, too, that 
Now, the retrospect of that creation is much to be regretted. And in fact, we have written to our MP to put this point hopefully strongly to Parliament to say that retrospective applications must uh, have a greater fee attached oh, to it. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, Councillor Donahue. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I agree with the comments so far. I think it would just set a precedent to others um, who were thinking about grabbing a bit of land at the end of their garden, and we've seen it on other estates. So I totally oppose this. Totally. Thank you, Lisa. Um, we had a proposal from Councillor Tribe that we object to this. Does anyone wish to second that? Councillor Harvey, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on it? All those candidates? Yes, please. I'm not in favour of giving you know a little bit, if they allow a little bit more land for planting. It's really uh, a, flat uh, a flat no. Yes. <laughs> it needs to go back to how it was. Right. Okay. In, in my opinion. Yeah. Is everyone in agreement with that? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Phil, those in favour? Yes, that's uh, unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, next item is number 21 Twickenham Road. This is up on the uh, Walking Road Phase 2. It's a uh, household application for a single story road extension. Um, there was a question Catherine raised over the window, and she was waiting for the officer to come back. They did, in fact, come back this afternoon since our briefing meeting to confirm that this, this, it's actually. It was at the bifold window, wasn't it? Not in bifold doors. And the architect admitted it was slightly confusing. Um, the one thing on there is that there's a gate in the wall they want to put in to give them access into the lay-by, where presumably they park, although it's not actually their, their land, the lay-by. It's not the visitor parking on the plan. Yeah. So is there on, in, on any comments on that? Or we take that as everyone's OK? The only thing, the only thing I'll notice that hasn't yet had a planning notice put up, so that caveat will be added. Thank you. Catherine. Oh. Can I point out that the officer has reconsulted on this because they have altered the description to householder application for single story rear extension and relocation of the rear access gate. Now, this re reconsultation would be due back on the day of our next meeting. Unless members say, well, actually, we knew about the gate because it was in your report. So we'll deal with that one rather than the original, and then we won't have to put it on the next agenda. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Councillor Trump? I'm not entirely in favour with the uh, gate. As, been, as has been said, they don't own the land the other side, so it's difficult for them to get out and onto public. Well, a little bit in, in between, I suppose, probably. But um, if they were going to put a gate in there, would that be against the uh, the original building? Well, they're saying relocation of gate. So they've got a gate, and they just want to move it near the house. Um, because it's um, a greenery area around most of that, but not... The part yeah. just by the buildings. I, I the suspect they probably have to negotiate some kind of access because of what they're going on in land that they don't own and wasn't part of the original application. But so, again, a bit like land grab, we have seen gates put in. Yes. Other. Um, on the other boundaries. Hand, it was clearly marked on the drawings, and I noticed it was there and possibly <coughs> nudge the officer to notice it too. If you're strong enough, Councillor Tron, you want to object that? Not really, it's an open area, but... Right. Um, I don't think the roads up there are adopted yet. So it's the question of them dealing with the landowners. I would like to think if they built the gate, they would reinforce the wall because the wall doesn't um, allow for a gate to be put in, mm -hmm. in it. So. It's not a case well, of just putting a. Yeah, that's not us, of course, that's building regulation. Yeah, but you know how things go. So, what's members' feelings that we've, you know, as Catherine suggests, we, we're just okay on both counts, including the, the additional um, information? Yes, thank you very much. Um, 
item three, uh, 29 Greenway Walk. This is some, um, this is underneath the uh, Stratford Road roundabout, isn't it? So it's 20, um, household application for proposed demolition, portion, erection, and single story side extension. Notices have gone up, there's been no public comment on it. No objections. Is everyone happy? Just, just, just ask, do we know that there's been no public comments on it? Um, well, they haven't, um, as of this morning. If, 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 um, if <coughs> Buckinghamshire Council aren't um, publishing. No, they are publishing. They are still yeah, publishing, are they? I'll be yeah. telling you about that in my report. Okay, yeah, cool. but they haven't stopped that yet. Yeah, no, I was, I was just, yeah, just good wanting point. to, to um, yeah. clarify that one. Fine, right, so that one we're happy with. Um, items four is number five Castle Street. This is um, what in the old days was the two Ginnies shop, then became property and office. Um, it had at some time been a, a residential extension to five Castle Street. All they're asking is to replace an upstairs face, uh, window with a casement window so it can be fully opened as a fire escape. It is a listed building. The, what we've looked at at the plans, it, it looks an acceptable change. It's not going to alter the look of the place. Is everyone happy? Yeah. 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 Um, <coughs> notices have been up and again. Yeah. Number yeah. yeah. five is 24 Plover Close. This is on Dinder Village. It's a householder application for a first floor side extension, single story rear extension. And canopy over the front door. This is probably one of the smallest houses in Buckingham. It's very, very, very narrow. They've got children that just want some space to move out. They have bought the land um, next door, and there are two neighbourhood, two neighbour comments, both supporting it on the grounds of enhancing their family life. Is it on badges? Is it on badges rather than? Did I say? Sorry, did I say that in the yeah. badges? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. an end of, it's an end of terrace as well. Yeah. yeah, the only thing is, it hasn't. Um, I'm just going to make that. No, I'm looking wrong. Right. That's fine. Everyone happy with that? Yeah, right. Like, we'll Cats have tried. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not um, fencing in their extra land that they bought. At the moment, there's shrubs and daffodils there. That's my true. No, exactly. Because again, as I say, you can buy the land and you can look after it, but there may be a clause, and probably is, that you can't encase it. Well, I think they've done their best with greenery. Yeah, no, it looks very nice. Mm. I'm, I'm no objection to the application at all. No objection to the Miss probably um, referring back to me earlier. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's something I'm to do with if, if it happened, of course. Agreed. But thank you for that. And finally, although this is not for consultation, we are going to consult on it. It's <laughs> our old friend, 31 Bortonville, I think Carolyn is champing at the bit right now. Huh. I'd like to ask, why it's coming as a um, not for consultation application for lawful development, when clearly it was here before, the same reasons presumably exist for the party, why it was turned down last time. I, I don't understand um, why it's not for consultation, why it's changed to lawful development as opposed to a full planning act. I did well, ask, I haven't had an answer. <laughs> well, I think you get a bit of a clue this afternoon that uh, Anthony gave a clue saying that it's a slightly smaller addition. Maybe they thought they could trade that off for not having. Well, we uh, discussed it quite a lot, didn't we? Yeah. And we designed it, and it was partly because it was in square footage, it was within some sort of uh, allowance. Yeah. But, but even so, nevertheless, it is still four bedrooms. It is still four and bedrooms. And it still has it's exactly still the same bedroom. parking it was refused on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's four bedrooms, only one parking space. It, it, it I think they're trying to sell the parking yeah. space or something from the yeah. place block. Nevertheless, they need yeah. three for four bedrooms. Yeah. Can I propose that we object even though not meant to? Thank you, Councillor Hammond. So, yeah, I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Ruff. Thank you, everyone. In favour of the objection. Yeah. Thank you. That ends our plans for tonight. Planning decisions. I would like to call everyone's attention to um, One Church Street. 
which we violently opposed, about selling of five mm. trees in the conservation area, um, right against the church wall. Mm. Um, it's been approved despite our, our protestations, and this is the time when the government, even today, is saying we want to end deforestation. And here they are, they're the Buckinghamshire Council since Holbeck on cutting all our nice trees down there. We had it at Waggling Gardens, we had it up at Page Hill um, earlier this year, the three maple trees near the school, which you know, people are still very upset about. And here they are, they're going to fell five conifer trees, which are part of the amenity landscape. Um, and I, I feel very strongly about this, so I just wanted to bring this to members' attention. And combined with the meeting that uh, the town clerk is trying to organise with Neil Passmore and um, other people from Buckinghamshire Council, I think we should make a very, very strong protest about this and try and take control back. We are the custodians. Of Buckingham and yet Aylesbury is overruling us time and time again. Councillor Stutchbury. I'm just very careful this night. I think there's some inconsistencies. Um, the aspirations of the environmental policy of Buckinghamshire Council is to plant 500,000 trees. The inconsistency being that you're taking out trees at the same time as you're planting them. I think before, if I was going to respond personally on this, I think what I want to do is to look at the policies that they've got in their environmental policies, which has been voted on the agreed by the council, and see whether there's a difference or a difference between their policies that they're acting in the broader terms of the council and their aspirations within their green policies of the council. I think that's the strongest point to question them and, 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 and the most critical relevant point for them because it rather weakens their policy uh, which they premise quite adequately that they want to plant 500 trees across Buckinghamshire, which we very pleased they want to plant 500 trees across Buckinghamshire, but if they, at the rate they take them out in Buckingham, they've got to plant quite a few more to replace that carbon footprint. I think that's where I would go, Chairman, if it was me, right, <coughs> in, a, in a purely critical sense. That might not be the way forward, but that's how I would address this. Thank you, Karen. Okay, Mr. Sarkin. Well, the bank is starting out equally shocked and, and confused because, as, as has already been pointed out, that wanting to plant trees, both nationally and, and regionally, and yet they insist on taking them out. Without any, we haven't been given a reason. Yeah, we exactly. cannot get a reason. I went on the line to see if there had been any reasons given. None. It is unacceptable. Um, Matt, Council Gaines. Yeah, thank you. I'm almost wondering whether it's time for some direct action up there, actually, to make a bit of a fuss physically. I know we can't go onto their land, but we can go very close to where those trees are. Invite um, photos to be taken and go to the local press. Do a bit of a swampy act without climbing any trees. Well, I'm not trying to climb any trees. <laughs> <laughs> or lying across the roof. We're just getting a gun. That's the heart. I mean, we own the land on the other side of the fence, I think, don't we? Mm -hmm. So can we not invoke the party war act to say you haven't consulted us? Mm. Surely this is going to affect our land. It's going to affect the drainage on our land. Surely we have a right on the part of that to object. Councillor Sutchbury. I think we have a little bit more than that. Um, we, you know, we have to be sure that the taking that don't affect the historical substructure of the town council property. When I say the town council property, not many people who do that and realise that the town council is cast down near the castle. This is uh, the actual castle is where the church is sat. And um, and um, and we also know that, um, that any change in the way you handle that can in itself affect the substructure of that historic monument. So I think that it's an historic monument and, and it's when the town council historically has done anything in my time on the council about years ago, we all had to have special surveys done 
and stuff done before we did anything. Um, test pits, we had to do lots of things, spend lots of money before we could do changes. And even when we agreed to plant additional trees, that was done. This is a less um, visible part of the castle, but the castle wall is the outside of the castle. And I'm not sure, I'm not a structural engineer. I don't know whether that could have any effect on it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's something worth considering in, in, a, in a comment. Um, if it was other places, it'd be more obvious. People standing there and, 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 and protesting is not a bad thing. Um, and um, I'm not going to be able to go on a few demos because that would be the past thing. I won't have to travel far for this one. Um, but uh, I think that's a good move. Um, but we need to be clear in what we're saying. The other problem, of course, is permissions being given. I understand that preparatory work is already started with removal of some fences or? Mm. They've got a um, panel fence inside our, in, inside their land. So we've got a chain link fence on our land. Um, and Mr. Hunt, the tree warden, you know, from today to say two of the fence panels have been taken down. Therefore, he's assuming that work is going to go on. So, the council again. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it may well be that we are too late to prevent these trees being felled. What I think we do need to, to make sure is that our point is made that this should not happen again. Yeah. And we've got to take every action we can to um, ensure that the trees that viable trees should not be felled. I would be very happy to join you on site if you invited um, Anna Richardson or, or whichever reporter from the advertiser and, and make our point. Thank you. Cuts the touch pre then cuts the heart. Uh, well, I think yeah, two things is you know, being against deforestation is not a hope. So we should be against it. Um, and any of these trees being cut down at all. Because it's one thing planting 500,000 trees, but they would be one of this big. You know, these are big fire conifers that have been there for many, many years. Um, and secondly, um, I do think we should develop the Party Wall Act or look at least ask the clerk to see whether we have any rights under that. I'm not an expert, I'm just reading through at the moment. I'm not entirely sure. But it does talk about excavations within three to six metres and so forth. I think, you know, given, given the way Buckinghamshire Council have allowed trees to be cut down on Page Hill, because they're disrupting, um, you know, mm. uh, uh, sort of uh, foundations. Then how the heck do they allow this to occur, uh, which is also going to affect, you know, our land up there by, by the church. So I, I think at the very least we should ask the clerk to look into this and and invoke it as as appropriate. Thank you. Can I just ask the clerk? We're coming to Council well, Statutory. But we can investigate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm googling what you've done. I can't give Council a clear answer. No, exactly. Thank you. Cast a touch I think when doing this, we need to make sure that what we make is a really strong point. Move it away from the individual who's made an application here and where it is to the wider subject of trees. And this is the example of it, not to personalise it around this one person application. But I do think we need to, before we comment the press and dinner, it's worth the town clerk looking at the policies within the environmental ambitions of the council against the policies in the thing. So that when we talk, um, Madam Mayor and the Chairman talk about this for us, that they can quote those strong arguments and, and they can't be reputed because they've been supported. And I think that's, because otherwise we'll just get their objection to cutting down trees here because it's on the town council plan. And, and that isn't what we're about. It, 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 it's, it's a story which goes beyond that. So we have to be very careful because the, the cry back will be, oh, it's only when it happened to the town council on their land that they actually complained. We've seen this somewhere else, they haven't complained. So you have to be really clear and plan how we're going to do this because otherwise we'll get a um, knee jerk reaction to us and criticism for doing what is meant to be the right thing. I think we do need to do that. It's always best to know what the pitfalls are before you start arguing. And I think we can bring other people into this argument. Party board, the Council of Harvey's over right to raise this issue. The other issues, all together, 
But let's not personalize it around the one person's application. It's, it's not about this application, it's about the success of that. I think that's and I agree on that. This is for the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, I'm, I'm very careful that we yeah, don't, thank you. you know, but that, that's what the next cry will be. Town Council only gets out of bed and to defend its own land. I think it's also worth making the point, I'm interested to our planning clerk, the church is grade one listed. Mm. Which is a very, very strong point. So it's our council. So <laughs> our members happy that the mayor and I should get together and we're trying to support for, for the future more as much as anything, we're trying to preserve trees in Buckingham. Thank you. Karen. Uh, and then you wanted the extra signatory to such a letter, I'm sure the Buckingham Society was well, going that's we can that. involve Karen as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, looking down the list, Buckinghamshire Council matters. Probably we haven't heard much of you from you tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, uh, Be careful what you wish for. Uh, I, I, what I, have I, you I, got for us? Um, I only just to say that I'm going to have it next week. Um, but that's nothing to do with planning, it's to do with children's education. And uh, I'll, I'll be attending numerous other meetings and I'll be attending for a party. On, that. on the on the actual issue um, of budget to account, I will be um, asking. I have and are asking questions on your behalf on many things. Just I demonstrated tonight, uh, and I see my job in this committee is to support the town council in their aspirations as council. I am worried, um, and I say I'm worried for where we go forward with the budget to account. I'm also evidently concerned that. I remember us discussing in this chamber on many occasions um, the problem of Top Angel, the problem that at Top Angel we have our main industrial area and that the, there's an area of land which has failed, an air highway which has failed, it's been failed there for a number of numbers of years. I'm sure if that was a piece of file highway, highway in some other parts of Buckinghamshire, where they had their main section of employment, that it would have been repaired. And I'm thinking of how best to approach that um, next. I also would be happy um, yeah, if the council wished to, um, to formulate a written question around the environmental issues in the trees. I think that's something worth going to council to get a written answer on the, on the book. Um, but I want people to. If they, I mean, if the committee's agreed to that, to work on a written question to full council, because we may ask questions here, but there'll be a time lag. If we get that in the public, listening to the strong thoughts here today, which could support the actions of the town council over the trees. But I don't want it to be my words, because it will only have to go to the left part to be decoded. And, <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and, you know, um, me and democratic services talk a lot about my writing. And um, but I think I'd like to work with you on that if the council's happy for us to do that. But it's not my job to write your thing, but I'd like to ask that question on your behalf. This would be something to discuss at the next meeting. Well, I, 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 it's not, I can do it. Not really something we can do tonight, because it's not all. I, I know your report's on the agenda, but yeah, we can uh, take I, action. I mean, at, the, at some point, but yeah. Um, I should carry on talking a lot. Perhaps we should wait until the town clerk's had his meeting with the yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, and then at that point, I'm happy. It, it would consent the committee to represent that question at full council. Full council is in line. We've got one in November. I'm not sure what the rules engagement would be for the following one in February. It'll probably be the precept. So I'm not sure whether they'll be accepting written questions. It might be too late. So I might write something anyway because I listened tonight to the concerns. Mm -hmm. And I do, I am thinking that we need to have a discussion about Top Angel because I'm, I went through there the other day and, it, and it's just deplorable, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, any questions for our Shire Councillor? No, thank you. Um, item nine, sorry, eight two. Catherine has appended the list of um, proposed and attend call ins, and we've shortened the list as we agreed at the last meeting. Yeah. Thank you for that, Catherine. That makes it much easier to see the overall picture. 
Um, item 9, Buckinghamshire Council Committees, Council of North Bucks Area Planning Committee, and Council Strategic Sites Committee during October. Um, item 10, consultations. Two consultations we've had from highways. The first one, we deal with an order, Summer House Hill, no waiting at any time. This is on the call, on the bend on Maids Morton Road, where it goes into Summer House Hill. Most of Summer House Hill is unadopted, but we believe that this part just here, because of the access to Tesco and Co from behind, um, is probably adopted, which is why they're going to put the yellow lines on there to, to make a clear, clearer space. Um, Antti, will you or Carolyn want to say something back into the starting? You, you go ahead, Carolyn. Uh, I was going to say, generally, I tried to, to go on tonight to answer this consultation. I found it fiendishly difficult, and I was wanting to have another go. But um, we don't have any objections to the yellow light on some of us here, and we certainly support it's very strongly the 30 mile an hour limit around the roundabout and Central Road. Thank you. Is everyone agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Cuts on. Yeah, I've got a comment about the 30 mile speed limit, but I don't have any objections to the okay. yellow. Fine. Well, thank you very much for that. Right, the next item, which we will come back to on, John, uh, Tindrick Road, the 30 mile an hour speed limit. Yeah. You, you raised this originally, so. I did. I don't want to know at this point, although you might feel the right to tell me who the earth wrote the crass statement yeah. in the end. Because this person, whoever it is who wrote it, clearly has no idea about Buckingham. Because there are several roads which are like this. Uh, Dalton Road, London Road, Stratford Road. Roads which have 30 mile speed limits but don't have houses open directly on the street. So they are important roads that are used by pedestrians all the time and are often crossed by pedestrians all the time. And therefore, this idea that some open for film DFT and guidelines, or why the, 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 the county council some years ago extended the 30 mile speed limit on Broad Road? There's no houses that open directly on the Broad Road either. So, this is a, whoever wrote this needs to get out more, know our town more, and know a bit more about the history of our town more in terms of where speed limits are. So, just as with Karen just said, We've got to support this. This is about people being able to get out of their houses, walk into town, perhaps with small children or people in wheelchairs or on scooters or whatever, and cross that road relatively safely. The idea that cars are going to go careering down there still at 50 miles per hour is just ridiculous. And this needs to be put in place now. Thank you very much, uh, John. Yeah, of course, the point to make here is that um, his recommender, his point. He says it does not meet with the current guidelines from the DFT. Those are guidelines, they're not tram lines, just yeah. advice. You know, we can go against that at any time. Councillor Stutchbury. I think we have to recognise that this has been a long standing aspiration for 30 mile an hour down there. When we agreed this development in the Buckingham neighbourhood plan, we always anticipated that it would be a 30 mile an hour yeah. down there in 2015. Um, they need to catch up with those accounts and other city realities. Um, we've got loads of residents now accessing that road, footway, and having to cross that road um, now to get out to go to school and to walk down to their closest primary school, I should imagine, or secondary school. They haven't crossed the road at 50. And we do, and, and not to recognise that. What we don't want them to do is retrospective changes to speed limits because we don't want something awful to happen and then them change the speed limit. What we really want them to do is respect it. We're well, known by the public, and I think everybody is to have a 30 mile hour speed limit down there. If the consultation produces a different view than that, we have to continue to pressure to the speed limit to 30 mile hour down there. But they haven't recognised it's a nursery. Which is adjacent, which is an education facility, which has got small children which will walk across that road from the new estate and they may take at that nursery place and they're going to be very small with friends. Anyone who's put a tram, I have attempted to put a tram in the past, it's some mixed success, they say. Um, um, uh, but um, you can't, it's the first thing that goes out on the road, isn't it? The child goes out first mm -hmm. and you follow the tram. Mm -hmm. And 
And the idea that that would someone comes off that roundabout, goes down by the nursery, uh, and something happens, that's not something we can support as a town council. Also, the person who wrote that isn't recognised in anything that's gone on in other parts of Buckinghamshire, um, and it doesn't recognise it's already said in Buckinghamshire. So it would be the wrong decision not to agree with the consultation. And it's the long held thing of the Buckingham Town Council for many years, and we, if they don't agree it now, going back through the community board, the route, their favourite route of petition, stroke, spending money again to get a new um, TRO, it's not only a bad use of public money, it's a bad use of office of time and, and nonsensical. So let's get it done now. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, just before I come to you, um, Councillor O'Donoghue is just leaving the meeting. If you're still there, Lee, so thank you very much for being with us tonight. Okay. Um, Councillor Davis, you're the next. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just um, wondering when my, my understanding of um, um, 30 mile an hour limits um, in towns, um, it was they, they would start so far from the privilege of the town or village. Um, so has that has that um, guideline changed? I, I, I didn't have any any understanding that it was anything to do with um, properties opening onto the road. It was to do with the curtilage of the. I, I suspect it, it's been updated to become a bit more sophisticated since then. Um, but they they would have followed the current DFT guidance. I think the issue on the table is actually when should you take other things into consideration yeah. in terms of safety. But I, I'm sure it's correct. Because I'm like yeah, I'm basically the curtilage of a fucking house extended now. Yeah, but I suspect they'd argue that doesn't include onto that road. Councillor Martin, then Councillor I'm just amused because they put all these fancy yellow trolley signs with you saying 20 miles is sufficient mm -hmm. to villages. There's plenty. Yeah. There's plenty. And then they go and, you know, and not do it. So why, why spend all that money on these stupid signs saying 20 miles is there's plenty, I'm not trying to put more money in this book, it's a science including mine. Thank you, Andy. Councillor Harvey. Just another additional thought is if it remains at 50, it's going to be very hard to argue for a crossing there of any kind. And it des that road definitely needs a crossing or two. Um, at, least, uh, at least there's ever a crossing like it is on the Norfolk Road, if not a penalty crossing by the main entrance. Because it, I keep repeating this, it's very hazardous for people. We want to encourage people not to get in their cars, but actually walk with their children or walk themselves into town um, to schools or whatever. We don't want people driving so much. And if you leave it at 50, it's going to discourage that. So it's a no brainer, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Councillor Trump. So I'll just add to that, and that um, we also want to encourage people to walk to the allotments, yeah. which is the other side. So yes, yes, yes. Uh, that goes in the same way. Right? Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Gaynor. Yes, thank you. I just feel this evening, several times, we experience the lack of joined up thinking, yeah. generally. And, yeah. um, you know, because it raises the issue of the street lighting as well along there, to me. And the joined up thinking would be, you know, we, we're all concerned about our environment. We should be doing everything we can to conserve our environment, but to reduce car journeys and um, conserve trees. So why are we allowing trees to be cut down and this big housing development where there is a 50 mile an hour limit on the main access into the town and no street lighting? How, how is that? It's just illogical. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Donahue, you're back. <laughs> Thank you. And um, before I leave, I just wanted to make a point that Linden Village um, goes out onto an A road and the A road was changed from a 60 to a 40. So I don't understand, and there's no houses going onto that A road. So why they even mention it for, um, for Tindrick Road, I have no idea because it was done out here. And we've got a primary school. And as Robin mentioned, you've got the nursery on Tindrick Road. So it can be done. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Councillor Sutton, you've spoken three times already. Is this no, I just to say that what our action is going to be, we're going to 
if we're going to say that we want that, are we going to put reasons into the consultation? Well, I was just going to put that to remember. Yeah, this, this is a consultation. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, I would say, echoing what Karen said, it's quite the most bizarre consultation I have ever seen. It's very difficult to get into. I haven't even investigated how you answer things yet. Because, um, you know, and I think it may have to be that we provide answers to whatever questions they are asking and then send a covering letter because I can't see from what, what they're doing, which is only one notch away from a find my street map of identifying the street lamp that's out. It's about that level. It's really weird. <laughs> then you compare. So what we've heard tonight, uh, everyone's obviously singing from the same song sheet, and, you know, some very good reasons to put forward, which Catherine's obviously made very clear, particularly those reasons about, you know, they're no joined up thinking about houses are butting to a road, about particularly, particularly good one is the pedestrian crossing one, which was raised, how can you have that on a 50 mile now? Right, so if we put all these points in and uh, get cancel any something to add emissions as well. Yeah. We've yeah. got a nursery school and we've got yeah, and, and those yeah. that completely yeah. ignored yeah. up field house yeah. nursery, haven't they? And I propose through you, Chairman, that we do a press release of our consultation on the day. Yeah. Mm. Good idea. But yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. some words towards it from George. Is everyone happy with that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, um, that was the two consultations. Um, item 11, enforcement. Does anyone have any enforcement that you'd like to raise tonight? I've got a couple when we finish. That's right. I've already raised this one with Catherine on that as well, about the wall that's been constructed there, which is now well above um, the ordinary height of the wall uh, on the house that's having another building yeah. up there at the same time, I think. Um, but Catherine's aware. Yeah, Catherine. Catherine. It's all right. I'd already dealt with it before cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So that was ahead of me as usual. Yeah, so Catherine tells us it's um it's not enforcing matter, it's building regulations. Is it building control? A building control, sorry. Because yeah. they're keeping an eye on the extension that's being built, and this is not part of the application, so it's a building control matter. So. Okay. And it's about three meters high from the pavement to the top yeah. of the piers, and they've now put lattice. Fencing in between the piers. It's the only front wall on Addington Brook. Yeah, it's completely unskilled to yeah. with it. And <laughs> the quality of the build rather argues that if we have a minor earthquake, it's going to fall flat. Just to say the point that I raised earlier about as well on Lake yeah. Young, which come back to the next meeting. Um, it's rather curious that we discussed the health centre. Um, um, leaving the application, anyone who knows the historic I mean, topography of that area, um, the, it, the the swell that we talk about actually serves that health centre, which is uh, and serves the um, the building which they put up now, which is yes, yes. so it's important they get that right. Thank you. Um, the ones I've got here, um, it's already been reported to enforcement, but, but this is eight page Hill Avenue. It's halfway up the hill from, from this end of Buckingham. They've grabbed out all the shrubs and uh, trees and shrubs in front of their property and put a, a block paving driveway in there um, with no drainage. So that has been reported to enforcement. There have been some photographs, they are aware of it. Um, the other matter is off fellows. I had Maggie Trant on today, and um, somebody you might have seen on Buckingham What Matters Facebook quite a lot over the weekend about the workers who come in only at the weekends. Uh, this time they're digging up the pavement out of the front, um, apparently trying to find the water meters so they could start to put in their um, sprinkler systems. Um, nobody seemed to know if Anglian water were aware. But she's also made the point that the wall at the back of the property, um, the rear, the, the single skin wall was taken off. And it's a listed wall of that, and then concrete rendered. A lot of the concrete's come through the gaps into the uh, properties um, number forty nine and and her property. Yeah. So she's been asking if we could do that. It's a strange situation at the moment because 
I don't think enforcement have actually have actually stopped the building work or tried well, to. Well, I don't know. I, I've sent several emails to find out what's going on, and I haven't had a single reply yet. I'm going to escalate it because you can you can go for for two months without a reply. Right. You can't claim that you were on leave for two no. months. <laughs> but Maggie also sent a photograph which was taken this morning showing the pavement with two pipe metal pipes sticking up through the pavement. And then must in that case have got a pavement license yeah. from it was also noted by a number of people they're wearing no safety equipment using you know, these concrete saws and paper and things. Councillor Thatchbury. I think the important is um, challenged, isn't it, at best, and, and not functioning at worst. So I'm concerned that we have no response quickly to Catherine about this issue because it has been raised at consecutive planning meetings. Though this isn't, we have to be very careful with these things, I'm, I'm happy to take, with the assistance of Catherine, to the appropriate person to ask that this be escalated because this is good enough if what I'm hearing is residents are being directly affected well, by these applications. It isn't good enough that it's sat there and there's three members there who could do this if they were present at the meeting. But I think it's too urgent to leave. I think it's too urgent to leave. If I can work with Catherine on on in July, September. Yeah, I need I, I need to work with Catherine to go and actually follow this up now because I think otherwise it, it's to limit harm, isn't it? Um, there's harm being done here, um, and we need to limit it and try and get an answer. And then if um, how I do that, I'll choose. But I I want to work with Catherine on that. If, if the, is everyone happy with that? Yeah, Thank I'm you. Not with yeah. consent. I'm not much, obli much obliged. Much obliged. I need to be managed to not, not be taken by the usual approach, you know. Any other enforcements? I think it's quite enough for tonight. <laughs> Item 12, Matters Report. I'm, I'm going to give you a very brief report on the meeting that um, I had to get with the town clerk with Anthony. Um, we met up with the university at Ford Meadow. To have a look at their plans for Fort Meadow. What they're proposing is what's called 3G artificial grass uh, mix, which is now the accepted standard in sport. It soaks up water, doesn't harm the environment. An L shaped sports centre is planned. That's on the land. It'll probably be um, where the, all the hard standing is at the moment. Not the car parking, but the hard standing, which backs onto the, the Ford garage and, and properties at, at the back there. Um, it won't be so intrusive for the flats across the river if they move that. Uh, we did meet with the new bursar, Matt, who's replaced Colin Stock, Stocker, and with Dean Jones, and just had a, had a general look around about what their plans are. They're a long time in the future, so they don't want us to publish anything particularly, although they did give us a draft idea, which I'll give them to Catherine as, as a plan, but it's probably going to be three years down the road by the time they've um, gone through all the processes. Anthony, no, I don't think so. I, I think uh, it, um, it looks interesting, but I think it has yet to mature uh, before any comments are made. Because yeah. quite a bit it could change, couldn't it? <laughs> there was an outstanding application, planning application for floodlighting and parking, though, which we had three years ago. That's about to run out, and they're not going to, to renew it. No. They're, they're just letting that lapse. Uh, Paul, anything you wanted to add on that? No, I think that comes in yeah. now. That was supposed to accommodate the cars at Parkin Station yeah. Road when they start building on that site. So are they delaying buildings? Yeah, well, they're, use, they're using it anyway. Well. They're using it anyway, but without, without, without the floodlighting, etc. So. Thank you. Um, so that's my brief report on that. I also then attended on Tuesday last week the about planning and enforcement service update. I did circulate to all a brief um, report of what happened. One thing I needed to just correct, I mentioned about Buckinghamshire planning being understaffed. It's actually Buckinghamshire forward planning. This is the people who look into all coming neighborhood plans and other developments. They have only 50% of their 
14 required staff, so there's currently seven vacancies. Have a big problem at the moment trying to attract staff. They lost so many planning people during the changeover. So many people were offered, were told to reapply for their jobs when they some of them asked for the third time and they just walked to it. But that there's been an increase in applications, uh, 2,500 this June is against um, 1,890 last June. 99% of applications are now delegated for decision. There's 1,500 enforcement cases in hand. This is particularly interesting. And they're getting about 450 new cases per quarter. This is across the whole county. Uh, but they've only issued 24 enforcement notices over the past 12 months. So most of them obviously dealt, dealt with um, by getting them to really apply, or people have just applied for planning app as an application, or people are, are complying. Uh, 28 neighbourhood plans are now made in Buckinghamshire. There's another 40 in progress, but of course, the lack of forward planning staff will have an impact on how quickly those can be done. Um, now, the main thing, of course, is that uh, under GDPR, Alistair Nicholson, who's the GDPR manager, gave an undertaking there'll be a consultation for any changes that made to public comments being shown on the planning portal. They will, for the time being, be continue to be shown as previously. There was quite a long discussion about this at the meeting, and uh, every single town and parish uh, and members of the North Bucks Planning Parishes Planning Consortium were present very strongly came out against that. And I think Mr. Nicholson was rather forced into a, a corner of it. Um, CIL, which is Community Infrastructure Levy, still not yet confirmed for the Vale of Aylesbury. It's a work in progress, they say, but they warned it could yet be abandoned in favour of national insurance levy, the, the NIL. Um, finally, the Buckinghamshire Design Code is a work in progress, as was mentioned earlier in the meeting. There's an A code, which is for the whole county, and there'll be a B code, which will be local area or topic based. And that's really the main things that came out of that meeting. Catherine was there as well, and she made a long report, which I think you've already circulated to members. No, I think I only sent it to you, actually. Yeah. I think they didn't need to on the same meeting. Okay. Right. Um, Catherine, if, if somebody wants full the notes, just yeah. let me know and I'll ask Catherine. She'll send me. Catherine's touch with Hopefully, can I have full the notes? I'm, I'm, I'm really absolutely concerned what I'm hearing because we've got the biggest thing going forward now, which is the emerging bucking fact. Consultation with the parishes and the way that we do that is going to be key. If we're starting with no start to do that, how are we going to meet our requirements for the forward planning for it? And not just, we're not dealing with a district area now. We're dealing with the entire budget shift. And the, the, if it's a managerial decision to um, make people apply for their jobs in a, in a, in a falling, in a, in a market where there isn't enough planners in, in the country, let alone in Buckinghamshire, professional planners, that's a bad decision. That's a typically bad decision that I watched this constant stream of uh, we all cry for our jobs. It was the mantra of Buckinghamshire County Council. It was the mantra of the District Council. In my time there, how many times I saw officers have to go and apply for their own job again um, um, because they needed to um, um, either reduce and make savings or make rationalisations. This isn't good management of staff and, and they can't get planners. And it's no wonder people are leaving if that's the case because there is a shortage of planners in the country. At this time, Buckinghamshire needs top quality planners to be able to deliver a plan which is sustainable and meets all the required quality issues of Buckinghamshire, let alone Council Gate, the premises at every meeting, the environmental impact of any development. And we could fail. And Buckinghamshire could be um, a developer's job if there's not the people out there to prepare this work. The development will rock up to Buckinghamshire, and as we said earlier, the Cambridge Art is the signal for that to begin. So this is really, really, really concerning. That's why I need the notes, because I, I can listen to the chairman. Thank you very much for that. 
This isn't being communicated in any great public sense to Buckinghamshire Council, so I'm going to assure you of that, because I think there's people um, across Buckinghamshire who will be really alarmed to hear what you said tonight. This isn't what's being communicated to us. Thank you, Lloyd. That's a try, Martin. It doesn't um, give you a whole load of confidence, does it, that the forward planning didn't see an increase in planning applications and reduction in staff. <laughs> so, hmm. isn't it ironic? <laughs> I think they ought to change their name and spend a few million on that. Yeah, for planning, of course, aren't the day to day planning offices. I think you want how many is it? You've got those 49? Uh, 69. 69. And eight vacant posts. Yeah, that's not so bad, but it's certainly worrying for the future, as Robin uh, just said. Anyone else have any comments on this? It's just really a matter for report, and um, mm. a lot of this will be taken forward. But what we really need to keep an eye on is, is public comment business, because we'll be we have both hands tied behind our back as planning consultants if we're not allowed to see that any any people in the locale that made objections to plans or support them. The slides and the question and answer session will be circulated. Yeah. Having just had a planning application go through the system, it is torturous, even for a very simple uh, item and long winded. Unbelievable. Yeah. And of course, the other problem, as, as you have all said about, you know, if there's lack, lack of planning officers for planning, you're going to get a lot more um, appeals on grounds of non determination because you know, they're, they're going way past the deadlines. Anyway, thank you for that, everybody. Um, 12 3 members report on any damage to purpose regarding the signage of the town access issues. I just can't stop arguing. Thank you, Mr. Chair's forgiveness. I do have another um, um, uh, enforcement. Uh, wow. I forgot to mention, which is the new shop on Market Hill, the Haven, which is where, where the music shop used to be, and then the uh, the plant shop used to be. It's now a it's now a mentoring shop. What? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Never tried Haven. to buy a mentor. Yeah, well, well, presumably it's a kind of surgery, I suppose, mm -hmm. of some kind. Um, but yes, they've got a new signage. Um on 24 <laughs> Market Hill, we really didn't put that on their signage. <coughs> so I don't think, don't think they've applied for permission to put in new signage, did they? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a good mention of them into actually getting it done. Well, music shop. Do you opposite what you yeah, think is the yeah, What is yeah. the right? Yeah. Very true. Never heard of it. Yes, I've also. Just I've from the I've also the passed a photograph on top, Catherine, tonight of the what the Tua Tua shop. What has become the nail bar? They've already um, done the shop front on the in the conservation area, so that needs to be home tried. Oh, by the post office. Yeah, that's where, right. Where, um, where the half seagulls trade. They call it Liberty yeah. Duty. Yeah. And you would know. I've never tried yeah. it. No. <laughs> Any, anything else? Thank you for that, John. Um, I've got no items for information. So, date of the next meeting, Monday, the 29th of November. With that, everyone, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.